you know, you, you did mention athletes having problems with their breathing. And I really wanted to ask you about this because we had um, mm -hmm. Patrick McEwen. He's yep. the, you, you know, okay. So yeah, he's the I'm, I'm, I'm Patrick, I'm, I'm uh, oxygen certified. Bro. I'm so nice. happy you said oxygen that, bro. <laughs> That's perfect. No, dude, I'm so happy you said that because, okay. Um, so after we had him on, be, be a little bit before that, I started focusing on nasal breathing and mm -hmm. that helped me so much with my endurance. For sure. Our boy, Joshua Settledge over here, who's done wrestling for years. Yeah, I can see the ears. Yeah, you can see <laughs> the man. ears. I see the ears. Right, he started. I see Josh, I he, see you. Yeah, he also started doing nasal breathing, uh, mm -hmm. like, I don't, how long ago was it, Josh? It's like eight months ago. Eight, yeah. eight months ago. So yeah. he has a lot of experience in grappling and he even noticed a big difference in how Definitely. calm he is and, and all that. So. Can you talk to us about like, I guess, how you help, how, What first off, why nasal breathing might be important for anyone mm -hmm. doing this type of work, mm -hmm. and then how you like help athletes get better at that? Well, Patrick talks a lot about the nasal breathing to increase the parasympathetic response, right? Mm -hmm. it's to increase the diaphragmatic breathing, yeah. right? So if you can breathe through the diaphragm, it's more optimal breathing than mouth breathing, right? Um, when you bring down the, where well, you bring the parasympathetic response up, you bring down the heart rate. So mm -hmm. it allows you to do more things without having to bring that heart rate up. So you're actually, you're decreasing your stress as you're going through the movement, right? Yeah. Um, again, we do a lot of breath holds for high intensity intervals, mm -hmm. especially getting closer to camp, but outside of camp, we'll do nasal breathing through an aerobic work. So yeah. let's say for instance, they're doing like some low level aerobic plyometrics, right? We'll have them nasal breathe or I'll even tape their mouth shut mm -hmm. and have them work through that. Um, again, like you said, you're, you're with everything, you know, increasing the nasal cavity, you're increasing that parasympathetic response. Like the cavity is actually getting bigger. It should. Yeah. I mean, wow. a lot of my guys have like deviated septum, so it's okay. <laughs> not as, not as, uh, optimal as we want, but yeah, at the yeah. end of the day, we still want them to be able to do that again. When you're talking about fighting too, mm -hmm. you don't want to have your mouth open. You know, you get caught that way, you know, knockouts become more prevalent there, you know, so we want to make sure that the mouth is closed and we're breathing optimally and that's the that's the main thing is nasal breathing has been shown to that's going to increase optimal breathing patterns mm. which is going to help with diaphragmatic breathing which is going to help with bringing down that that stress response and get you to do more throughout the fight how can someone start like it because like i know a lot of people who have a problem with that they, they feel like they just can't keep their mouth shut yeah. when they're exercising or doing that type yeah. of work what's the best way to start implementing that and bring that into your training so a lot of times, like with the deviated septum, that's going to be hard, you yeah. know, um, mostly I'll level with them. I'll say, you know, try to breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. The mm -hmm. first one, right? We do it all the time. Um, but it's hard when, you know, when you start to really push the pace. You don't do it. It's it, you don't know you're doing it. Right. It's just it's just, you know, it's a response that you do. Right. Um, the goal really is to one is you want to do it in an aerobic way first so that you're not bringing the heart rate up maximally. Okay. And then you can get used to it. And I usually say, you know, Patrick does say, you know, you wanna do it first while you're just doing your daily activity. Mm -hmm. Then you wanna try to increase it by, you know, doing it while you sleep. If you, if you wake up and your mouth is dry and things like that, obviously you know you're, you're doing some type of mouth breathing at night. That means you're not getting adequate amount of sleep too. That's gonna yeah. hinder your performance. It's gonna hinder, you know, your energy output, things like that. So first and foremost, I would say, start doing nasal breathing while you're just doing your daily activity, right? Could be, you know, cleaning the house, whatever, you know, walking, you know, going for a light walk. Then from there, you can start to increase it. Now, again, you have to do your Bolt score, which is your body oxygen level test, mm -hmm. right? If your body oxygen level test is higher than 20 seconds, then you can start to work into, let's say, some more higher aerobic work or doing your strength and conditioning with a nasal breathing. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying do a nasal breathe when you're doing max load, right? You know, obviously you have to create maximal intra-abdominal pressure and things like that. That's going to take your mouth. That's going to take everything. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing that lower level aerobic work, let's say, for instance, you're drilling, right, on the mats. Mm -hmm. It's perfect to do, right? Because it's lower level aerobic work. Yeah. You're doing something technical and you're increasing your ability, one, to bring up the nasal cavity and you're you're giving yourself the ability to start to understand how to properly breathe through those stress situations, mm -hmm. you know? So it just goes in progressions there. Okay. That Ooh. makes sense. Yeah, man. No, I'm, I'm so happy. Like, I'm so happy that we're not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that works, man. Right? Yeah. When we tell people that we tape our mouth shut to go yeah. to sleep, people do think we we are weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't remember what uh, Patrick said, but he, like, we asked him, like, straight up, like, what percentage do you tell, like, do you make your athletes train 
you know, through nasal breathing. Mm-hmm. Like, I know you said like for the heavier stuff, but like if you had a percentage that you can put on it, like, do you think you would have one? Um, man, it's a lot. I yeah. would say, I would say at least 50 to 60% of the Okay, time. cool. See, yeah. it's good just to put, I'll even put a do number it, on it. Like you know? for sure, especially off camp when mm-hmm. we're trying to build a base of aerobic capacity, definitely we'll try to do the nasal breathing. And then from there, I do a lot of breath holds especially in camp when we're doing the higher intensity work. Like, uh, for instance, we'll have, uh, like a protocol for me would be a prowler push. We use the prowler for a lot of things, Mm -hmm. but we'll do a lactic capacity training where it basically is increasing the ability to reproduce power for a long duration. That's, that's the fight game. So what I'll do is I'll have them sprint with the prowler down. I'll have them breathe in. They'll blow all the air out as they're pushing it about 20 yards. Okay. Then they'll hold their breath once they once they hit the turn and come back twenty yards with While their still breath, their breath with their breath held with the air out, Whew. right? Oh man! Okay. You do that for ten rounds, right? You get a twenty second break. You want to breathe, but the catch here is that you want to be able to catch your breath between five or six seconds, mm. right? And they're actually they're doing active recovery by shadow boxing or pummeling or whatever the case, wow. but they're nasal breathing as they recover. So what we've seen there is their ability, one, is to bring down their heart rate faster, mm-hmm. which is going to help with increased ability to produce power for a long duration. Yeah. So the goal for that is to obviously making sure that they can cope with the stresses put upon them, especially mm-hmm. inside a fight when you're getting smashed and, you know, you, you might have somebody laying down on you. Mm-hmm. You know how it is when mm-hmm. you do jujitsu, And the same thing. So we have to, one, saturate the body with that carbon dioxide, right? Have the ability to, you know, sustain that amount of stress produce air hunger and then from there they can cope with that stress it's the same thing we do with the lactate retention yeah so i'm putting all these stresses on them so that they can deal with it later on has any of the fighters just had some like insane crazy bolt score not really man. oh really no not really um i guess the highest one even dustin with his vo2 being in the 60s i think it was around 25 so it's not like up in the 30s or 40s Mm i don't know josh what's yours Let's do it right now. <laughs> Let's do it right out. now. Yo, that bolt, like doing that bolt test, it's difficult. It's like you yeah. exhale everything. It's funny. Then you hold, right? Yeah, I was doing it. I was doing breath holds on the way out here mm-hmm. on the plane. So I mm-hmm. do like breath holds like periodically. Yeah, I even do it while I'm driving. How, how do I don't, you I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to tell you guys to do that. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't do a fucking Mad Max breath hold, please. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I don't condone that, idea. by yeah. the way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll do I'll do them periodically throughout the day, and then I'll and I'll also measure out how many times I breathe in a minute. You want to make sure that you're breathing at least, well, at the most five or six breaths a minute. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can get there, then you're then you're breathing optimally at that point. Got it. It's for the breath holds, just so people can have an idea of what this is. And if you guys haven't gotten or haven't gotten that book, The Oxygen Advantage, just go grab it. For sure. But can you tell them about breath holds real quick? Yeah, I mean, well, for the most part, you're looking at it from, you're trying to increase, again, that carbon dioxide saturation. Mm-hmm. You're trying to increase the ability to take in oxygen and utilize it. Yeah. So what you're doing is, again, you're increasing hemoglobin inside the blood, so it's activating or giving your body oxygen to the working tissue, wherever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, for instance, for us, like I said, with the prowler push, you're increasing the oxygen utilization. So again, I'm actually increasing VO2 per se, right? Um, and that's the best way we can do it from a high altitude standpoint, you're actually imitating high altitude training, gotcha. right? You're not going to do it. You know, I mean, it's not fully there. You're not going to go in like, it's not like Colorado, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if you're living at sea level, like I am, right? The goal is to make sure that we can get the most out of that particular response. So we do the breath holds to simulate high altitude, to increase that ability to take in and utilize oxygen, right? And then also, you know, that, that CO2 saturation is going to be key too, because it helps you increase your ability to not have air hunger got it right do this don't buy masks you see a lot of people with those <laughs> well, training masks here's the or- thing patrick has masks that it actually yeah i know mm-hmm. so i was like oh man this guy's got a, a fucking training mask so, I was <laughs> okay. like, so the the whole thing behind that is obviously it's not going to simulate high altitude there mm-hmm. what it is going to do is going to help with the diaphragm it's going to strengthen up the diaphragm okay it's going to enhance nasal breathing mm-hmm. because the goal is to breathe through the nose when you have that mask on. If you go to oxygenadvantage.com, Patrick, I better get some money, <laughs> man. But if you go there, they have the mask there too as well. Oh, and they sick. have the and they have the uh, the strips for the mouth to close oh, the mouth up. I didn't know that. If you are a fighter or someone who wants to start training in MMA, listen up. My name is Phil DeRue. I am the head performance coach of American Top Team. 
I train some of the elite MMA athletes in the world, such as Dustin Poirier, King Mo the Wall, Frankie Edgar, Junior Dos Santos, Edson Barbosa, and Yuana Janjacek. Going to MMA gyms or hiring a personal trainer can get extremely expensive over time. So if you want to get in shape and train using the exact program of the top MMA fighters for an affordable one-time price, check out Fight Ready in the description below. Mm -hmm.